All right, this following podcast, I sat down with Nahi Gordon from the Meaningful Minute and the Meaningful People podcast. Um, what an amazing, amazing person. He is wise beyond his years. We had a great talk. I could say it was just an incredibly fun podcast where we just threw around all these different ideas and things that make us tick. And um, we just talk about so many different topics, it's hard to even sum it up. But it was a wonderful conversation. And it was an honor to have him. I hope you enjoyed as much as I do. Hello and welcome to the Brainstorm Podcast. And now, your host, Sonny Perlman. Okay, we're starting. I think we started already. Oh, we started. <laughs> First of all, you don't get to be, like, the guest enough. You say you've been the guest before. A couple times. I, I, I like being a guest more than I like... Being an inf- interviewee, interviewer, yeah. interviewer. I don't know. It's something like I have no idea what we're about to talk about. I can right. just react to what you say, as opposed to me coming in like having to know. To be honest, though, a lot of my my podcasts, I I go in like I know what the person does or what they're about, but I don't write questions beforehand. I don't think you you do either, do you? I didn't. The only one I did it for was Wawa. Because you gotta be, you gotta be prepared for that one, dude. The guy is moving at full speed. You gotta be able to jump on that train. I will tell you that I that I I was humbled when I did. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because my whole goal, I literally was meditating before. I was like, I'm going to be able to make this into a conversation. We're gonna. It's gonna be a back. Like and not forth. a speech. It's not gonna be a speech. Complete failure. Yeah. He said gems and gems. It was the most amazing thing in the world. I, my so my interview with him. I interviewed him on his back porch by his house right so he had he already had he had home field advantage on me i went to his house okay and um listen he's just a genius and when you hit a topic and he's got like files in his brain of what he's gonna say right just it's like it's like it's like watching michael jordan shoot a jump shot you sit back and enjoy it you just sit back <laughs> and enjoy it. it but it is my way of podcasting i love to have a conversation yeah but it was, I, I gotta say, it was, <laughs> it was very humbling. I was like, I, but uh, I want to say something. It was. So you, you, really, you didn't really say as much as you wanted to say. I, well, I literally go through the entire thing to pull out clips. I didn't find one clip of me saying anything, <laughs> but like, but what do you think about uh, Judaism? And then like, <laughs> phew. <laughs> well, you could use like imagine I was Rabbi Wai. Like, what would you want to like? What did you want to say? Did you get it out there and you could like superimpose him here? Right. Get, get your words in. Get, okay, that's the move. Well, I will tell you this. I looked at my notes. I covered everything but one topic. What topic? I, I don't know if I should say. Okay, I wanted to it. speak to you about masturbation. Okay. See, a little, a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did. I was a real issue with it's pretty teens. And you, like, I really, it's pretty divine that you didn't get to it. Right, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, the truth is I I, I uh, ambushed him with the, uh, with the Flatbush Girl stuff. Oh, did you? That's why he got all this awesome content on talking about the Agunas. Listen, he's so he's, he's equipped. He came out strong. He's equipped to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good. But I got to tell you, so this is what I'm very excited to have you in is that this is a new passion project of mine. Mm-hmm. It's not that new. And I love talking to you about it. And I, yeah. every time I can sneak in a little bit of like, because you know so much about it. Um, and I'm just the newbie. So I just wanted to, like, I had a couple of very intense podcasts in a row. Yeah. And I wanted to get back to myself, like, yeah, a little bit. Pretty, like it's, I really should put this on and make it more chill. But <laughs> have it near me. That's good enough. It's you know? near you. Yeah. <laughs> you could put it on. It's, uh, yeah, this is this is for Soberfest. I think this is going to come out after Perm, but we are yeah. celebrating Perm the whole month. Was it, like, birthday month, you know, if you have your Hebrew birthday and your English birthday? You my, celebrate. Wife's bir- my wife's birthday tomorrow, actually. Ooh, happy birthday. She got a good gift. Really? I should get a good gift. Oh, you didn't get a good gift yet. You just I admitted that. Why are you incriminating me? I didn't say I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I should get a good gift. It's a little late. You think this would be good? <laughs> uh, I'll give you some more merch. <laughs> Maybe a yarmulke. I have yarmulkes. I don't think she'll need that. She but She might not need a yeah. yarmulke. <laughs> What do you do for birthdays? I, I will. I'm it's actually it's it's, a, it's different in every family, probably. You know what he'll do for birthdays. I um. No, for your wife's birthday. What do I do for my wife's birthday? Yeah, what do you, what, do you wine and dine her? Like what happens? You guys have kids. Yeah, it's different, have, right? Yeah, we have we have little ones. So it's, I don't know, probably go out maybe 
somewhere city. Oh, the city is trash nowadays. So bad. It's such a bad place to be. It's such a bad place to be. I don't like it. Get a gift, go for dinner, or something, something like that. We're not high maintenance people, you know. Pretty. I'm not going to like Cabo. Is that a place, Cabo? What is Cabo? Is that a place, Ellie? Is, is that a place? Cabo is definitely a place. Is that Mexico? It's in Mexico. Okay, Cabo. Yeah. We're not going to Cabo. Oh. Uh, you heard this? There's a Pesach program, Isabelu or something. It's some. It's a. It's an. Their own island. What do you mean? There's an island. There's a Pesach program. What does that mean? Island. What is it? Isabello? No, not Isabello. I'll look at it because there's an influencer that's going there for Pesach. And she just like posted about it. But it's like, I'll show you one second. And they take off their own island. It's it's located on a private <laughs> island. Isla Baru Cartan, Cartagena. Cartagena. It's f- formerly Pesach and Viarta. That's crazy. Look at this place. Like it's on its own island. For those of you at home listening, yeah, we'll send you. We'll no, send, you can't we'll send see. You what is this? It looks really pretty. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty dope. People are getting really creative with Pesach ideas. Yeah. Do you go away for Pesach? So this year, I actually got invited to Pesach in Bordeaux. Oh, nice. Connecticut, which as is really like uh, like like yeah, working, doing like you know moderating panels and so cool. stuff like that, which I'm like, which is crazy because I remember as a kid, like, being at some of these programs. And um, going to speeches because I always like going to the speeches. I wasn't like a normal kid, I guess, who just ran around the hotel wrecking the place. You went to the speeches as a kid. It depends if you consider a kid. I wasn't like six going oh, to speeches, okay, but okay. I was a teenager, and I was like, look up at the stage, and I'd be like, I vividly remember, like, you think I'd be ever be able to stand up there? And I, I was probably a very anxious kid. I didn't think I had the nerves to be able to do it. So that actually a cool moment. I remember thinking that specifically. About this place in um, Connecticut, the Crown Plaza, or now it's the Armand. And a couple of weeks ago, I was <laughs> invited by Project Inspire. Oh yeah. And I and I I was up on that stage, moderating a panel. That very stage, I remember looking up to like looking. And it up was like, like the main event, like everybody was there. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was you pretty get nervous cool. up there. It's uh, yeah, I definitely was nervous, but less nervous than I probably used to be. You, you're a therapist, like right. you know how it is. Like exposure, yeah. The it's more exposure. you do things, I used to be. I used to be really nervous before I did a podcast. Yeah. Before I used to record a podcast, I used to be so nervous. Do you have podcasts now that you still get nervous at, or it's pretty much? Not? I'd say the last one I got. I mean, it really depends what's going on. Like if I'm rushing and I'm tired, and I sleep the night before. It just depends on the circumstances. If specifically the last guest to make me nervous going in was probably Ben Shapiro, because however you felt about Rabbi Wally Jacobson, right? Imagine how I felt talking to Ben Shapiro, because we had a producer, his producer in our ears, basically saying like six more minutes, three more minutes, final question. It's like wow. it's like it's like God talking to you, <laughs> like <"Shah, laughs> can you let me ask the question? And like we never intended on listening to the producer's instructions for how long, like. We were planning on just going rogue, but we, we kind of listened. They didn't bit. let you. That's why they have that guy in your ear. Yeah, they, they have him like, yeah, he's like Ben's gatekeeper probably, you know? I don't know. At some point, like, are you human anymore? I don't, I don't need to say that. But like, there's some level of fame. Like, yeah. Ben is like, he's got, probably got, like, you security. Fame is, yeah. So I spoke to someone who actually lives in, like, Boca, and they said, I said, you had a Shabbos meal with him? Like, yeah. So what's that like? They're like, he has security outside the house. They go with him everywhere. I um, that can't be fun. No, I can't imagine. Imagine it. someone following you everywhere. I think there's like a sweet spot. I'm trying to figure out the of fam- sweet spot of fame. Of fame. Well, let me ask you a question as a yeah, therapist. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of celebrities in the world that I want to say I don't say majority because I don't like doing fake number stuff. You could tell me, but they are they have fallen off and they are homeless they lost everything they've all lost all the relationships you know the divorce rate among celebrities it's unbelievable. they they don't live good healthy normal lives why well i mean to start with okay, you like the, how i how cl- i flipped this that was you. awesome you can flip it on me all day <laughs> you're the real interviewer i'm just learning i'm just learning i will listen uh i will tell you i had a thought yeah that you're probably the youngest guy I come to for advice. Oh my god! I gosh. will say that. That's no, so kind. It's kind of cool. 
That like, is I, every time cool. I ask you advice, I'm like, this is like really interesting. How old do you think I am, though? I th- are you around 30? A little, yeah, younger. Still in my 20s. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> That's cool. No, I appreciate that. I'm a. I had my last kid at 30. Like, oh, nice. Now my kids are. Yeah. My youngest is turning 60. Wow. So it's been. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Um, the interesting thing about there's so many pieces here that I've actually like analyzed a lot yeah. and seen a lot. Most people that go for fame are validation addicts, or we call them codependents. But you said go for fame. What if people like like if someone a guy like Justin Bieber didn't go for fame? He was extremely talented, and it, fame got him. He can go for fame. Um, it's rare that that fame got you. Like Justin Bieber is actually a really interesting example because he was a little kid making YouTube videos, and all yeah. of a sudden he was famous. Yeah. That's very rare. In the general world, it's like there's a little kid who goes and tries out to be in 100 TV shows. So like and goes 100 on Disney movies. Channel, Nickelodeon. And right. They're working their way up. See, Justin Bieber is a weird example because like, he was like, whoop, and he made a good video. And everybody's like, we want him. Yeah. Gazillion dollars. But again, even that, um, even that example, like the fame, could, could anybody go through that amount of fame and walk out unscathed and healthy? No. Why not? Well, okay, so I, I this takes me to like the a topic that I love, which is cults. Like, <laughs> I I love cults too. You love cults, the, right? I think you told me the you Davidians. Love cults. Well, I didn't tell you I love cults. I think you what did one that? conversation. You said you were into cults also. Nah, what? It, I'm telling you, I feel like you no, remember that. maybe not. Okay, fine, <laughs> fine, fine, fine. No, but you know, like the Davidians. You're into cults. I'm I I I'm a hist- I don't know I'm a history Davidians guy. Is. Okay, so like me too. Waco, Texas. Yeah. So like they were called Davidians. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those are Davidians. Because David Koresh. David Koresh. Right. So the Davidians. He didn't really get original with the name of the cult. Just they probably named it before he got a chance. Yeah. It probably not. But, but what I yeah. found is that the what everybody I know that became a cult leader, and I know a bunch of people that became cult leaders on some level. Okay. Okay. So I've gone deeper than you maybe. We'll get there. But <laughs> <laughs> um what I've discovered is that most of them start very legit like they don't have any like they just want to help people they don't really have yeah they got a bit of a inflated ego or whatever but they don't really have these evil intentions i'm going to do all the stuff and i'm going to force people to do these things what i find is there's a flip and this is a theory so there's a flip where you start believing what everybody else says about you you see this with actors and singers and all that stuff when a cult leader like people are like wow you you know, I sit with Y, but wow, you're so good. You must have the best marriage in the world. You must be the best father in the world. If Wawa believed that, yeah. he'd be screwed. Imposter because syndrome, why? It's not imposter syndrome. No, because then you, they're putting you on a pedestal. It's impossible. You can, you'll never be able to live up to that. You can't live up to it. But if right. you do believe, like, well, if they're all saying it about me, then I must be true then you're now put on a pedestal. There's no more self-development. There's no more like looking into yourself, being humble. You become a bad person. Like our biggest, yeah, our biggest, um, like our greatest leader, Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah. Well, maybe the rabbi. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh. We'll get to that. I wanna... <laughs> every, every generation has Moshe Rabbeinu. No? Every generation. Okay, fine. That's a good twist on it. I like that. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's say Moshe Rabbeinu, top guy. Um, we say he's humble. Yeah. And I believe that if the second you slip out of humility, you can't grow as a human being anymore, you turn into a caricature of yourself. And then you just start believing like you, you can't get back to this world. I'm not explaining this perfectly, but you can't get right, back right. in to this world. So I see this with actors and actresses. And all, they, they lose themselves to a place where everybody is just admiring them all day. And they, eventually they're like, well, I, I am. And, and I think what happens then is you tell me if I'm wrong, but... They stop working on themselves because they think they've achieved that level, and they just become bad people. They don't have they don't meet us, right? Like they, like I don't know. I've spoken, I have spoken to people, and like they're celebrities, and it's just like you're you're just like mean, right? Like why do you think you can talk to anybody like that? And it could be the answer is they just stop working on themselves because they've been fed and fed and fed that they are God's gift, right? Well, it's an interesting thing. I read uh, an analysis in a book. I really don't remember the book, so I can't quote it, but. Um, this analysis was in the old days, the word genius yeah. is a Greek, is from Greek mythology. 
And like when words. it was what? Like all words. Like all words. So what a genius was is this character that would would come down and give you brilliant ideas. So you would say, I'm with genius. I'm with a genius. And then genius things would come out. We stopped saying that. We started saying he is a genius. So in the Greek mythology was built in the idea that you're not a genius. Yeah. And you're not a muse. You have you need a muse, you need a genius. You need all these factors we to just, do incredible yeah, we things. Just ran with it. But you're just a person. You're a vessel. And the best thing you can be is a vessel that holds it, but you can't be it. The second you are it, you put yourself on a godlike character. That's what I'm saying. Well, we do with everything. Like, you know, someone submitted a question the other day that we were answering, right? Someone said, like, people start using the terms just very flippantly, like, oh, that person's depressed. That person's anorexic. That per Like, those are, I guess, just because someone is sad doesn't mean they're depressed or doesn't mean so just because someone skipped a meal doesn't mean they're anorexic we use terms right very just like loosely and most of the time it's not accurate right and in the in the in the therapy world they try to switch it like he suffers from depression he suffers from addiction right he, but when someone says i'm depressed well that's now your identity like yeah. how do you it's really hard to change your identity yeah. you can't change who you are so, I mean, I, I even don't like, I like to skip words like depressed and anxious. Like I, like all these words have become so powerful that they, they literally have like, they're a monster of their own. But let me ask you a question just to follow up on, on that point. It, so if we see that, like what's going on with these celebrities and they see it also, how come they don't have like, like a mental health and emotional well being team in their corner, making sure that they don't go down that path? Like, it's not, the, I mean, like, it's the elephant in the room. Like, oh, you're a celebrity today, but look at everybody who's been before you as a celebrity. And most of them, like, literally, like Elvis Presley, Justin Bieber, Michael Jackson. Uh, listen, go well, on. Well, they all probably have people from before that want that. That's why everybody drops their first wife, you know, before yeah. they be. They all, you have a group of people that are sycophants. They're just like kiss ups. They're like sitting around you and they benefit from you being unhealthy. Like you just pushing yourself to do a European tour where you don't sleep for like six months. Right. And like it's so unhealthy, everything about it. And you're using drugs and this and that. And everybody around you is making serious money making or money. fame around it. They're all benefiting from your sickness. There usually is a couple of people from the past that are like, hey, stop. But they're not fun people to hang out with anymore. Yeah. Like, you got the new people. They're all excited. It's like every movie plot. Like It's like every the movie The friend plot. from like 30 right. years ago said, I knew this would happen. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question, but I do, I, I have, you're, you're hijacking it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You're allowed to. You're allowed to. This is what I want. The conversation yeah. is what I want. Um, I, I have a joke with the lottery because the lottery is pretty high now. But I, Is I, it? Yeah, well, I love playing the lottery. Not because I, I never I checked my tickets. <laughs> I love playing the lottery. Okay. Because I'm very into like... Um, losing? No, I'm into... You know, <laughs> losing, I'm used to already. Um, I'm very into... I'm very into um, the law of attraction. The law of attraction is... Well, I, you probably know about the law of attraction. But I don't. I don't know why you assume I do. What? I don't know why you assume I do. do you must have heard about the law of attraction. I've heard of the, the term. The secret is the really book, the, the famous book about the law of attraction. The law of attraction is, and it's like what the rabbi says, like, track good, design good. Like, yeah. if you think good, then good it's will manifestation happen. Type it's thing. manifestation. It's okay. manifestation. So that's, so when I play the lottery, I never, I, my wife tells me every time, you have to check these tickets, because I have, like, my console in the middle. Yeah. It's full of tickets. I never check them. But it's $2 to start dreaming about what I would do if the if I won the lottery, like I, it's a two dollar dream. You're paying for a dream. I usually buy it like on the way to work, and I like, and then I have an hour and a half to be like, hmm. Maybe you want. What would I do? You want to just buy the tickets from me? I'll sell you tickets. You could sell me your tickets. It works for you. <laughs> no, me. I'll just sell you tickets. I'll just old like, tickets. No, no just it, I, I have to believe it's a possibility. <laughs> you have to believe it. So I do believe if there's a winner, and they're like, "Who's the winner?" It might be you. Nobody knows, and like I start hearing it on the news, I'll be like, "I should check my tickets." Yeah. So that's what gets me. That would get me going. But what I'm saying is, if if I actually won the lottery, I'm locked and loaded. That means any friends I had before, you're, you're, the, that's door, the door it. is closed. There's no more friends Am allowed I in? in. Am I in? Yeah, because I know mm. you before. Okay, good. What I'm saying is, I mean, it's not about who you know; it's about who you want in. I'm sure you know a lot. No, of people. but I, no, but the second you win that money, yeah, like 
who do I trust any relationship? Like I now have a hundred million dollars. Would you let anybody know that you won though? I would try so hard not to. But New York, by the way, I looked into this. New York is a state where you can't do a secret winning. Oh, they they publish. They publish it. Move it. Buy you gotta buy it somewhere Jersey. else. Yeah, you got. I don't know which <laughs> state. I have a whole plan if I win. But what I'm trying to say. I, I would because I, I got like a tax lawyer on on <laughs> dial. I'm like, I am not gonna just bring this in. This is, yeah, you got to put it in a in a safety security box, and then you call the tax lawyer and you got to make an LLC and you got to you know it's you can't just put that yeah. in your money. It's 100%. Just, all no, taxes. You're paying crazy taxes. Crazy right. taxes. That's it's such a Jewish conversation. We're talking about winning five hundred million dollars <laughs> and we're compla- and we're complaining about the taxes. Like what the heck? Anybody else having a conversation about winning was a billion dollars? Talking about what they. Yeah, but those taxes, like, we're so yeah. Jewish. Those taxes are crazy. It happens to be a funny thing. I, I tell you, my wife has a business, and she she sells, like, uh, wig so yeah. wig accessories and stuff that she's invented or whatever. In the non-Jewish world, she, she tapped into the non-Jewish world kind of accidentally, and they're all, like, super pleasant, and, and she has, like, no fear. But in the Jewish world, anybody who does anything, they're like immediately copying her and like oh figure out God. how to like cash in on it. And this, yeah. this is anti Semitic. <laughs> yeah, I make a flag by YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. Your videos are going to be next to like Norman Finkelstein. <laughs> anyway, okay. So I want to go. Yeah. It's interesting because I told somebody that you were coming who works for me. He, and it turns out you're related to him somehow. Who? The Gutlizer. He's not here. He's my clinical director. Okay, cool. But you're not. You. It's like a far relation. From my wife's side or me? From Gordon. Okay. Because he's he's Chabad. Awesome. Yeah. And sure. you're. That's how I found out that you're. I knew that you were somehow connected to Chabad because I've yeah. heard your interviews with Simon and Wawa. I interview a lot of Lubavitch people. Yeah, but by the way, these are. They're all legends. Yeah. They're making everybody else look bad. They got a lot of I hate to say as a people, but they are legends and they're doing so much. You know, I got actually got I even sh- I shouldn't even give this airtime. I got an email after I interviewed a couple of people in a row that were Lubavitch and someone like emailed me. We got a lot get a lot of emails, but like Yeah. The email said something like um why don't you interview more mainstream people? I love your podcast and like, but like these people are not part of the mainstream Jewish world. I'm like, what? They're all, they're only there. So you have your minion in China and is a Balu Baru, whatever you're going, but they're not a mainstream Jew. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Right. I don't know if the person got back to me, but I don't know. We have to have a lot of respect for all types of Jews. But I have a lot of conversation because I, I think yeah. that when you're trying to think of who you want to interview, I think of Chabad. <laughs> it's like half Chabad people, like definitely half Chabad people. They're so cool. It's true. They have such cool stuff. And by the way, the other half that are really impressive, you speak to them for a little while, you find that they're Chabad. Yeah, you find you out like they're... You spoke to Nancy, like, yeah. like, wait a minute. Okay. Your beard's too short, but you are Chabad. What it boils down <laughs> to, it's interesting. I don't. You know, I think the theory is, it's not my theory, I think this is, this, uh, other people have discussed this, that... These, as kids, right, the people who I've interviewed, uh, they grew up in houses of shulchan, and there's no, mom, go into my room, don't bother, don't bother me for like six years as teenagers. Like, no, they're active members of building their community, whether in, they're in Seattle or Mauritius or wherever they are in the world. There's, they're, they are on shlichas too, the children, like right. the kids. And you ever see like some of these 14-year-old Chabad kids, like the, the kids of shluchim, they are so articulate. They are they are so respectful, and like I think that comes, it goes to the point that you love talking about. But I think it's because they're they're part of creating a village, right? They're part of they're part of a community, and they're they're, and they for, for, like a uh, credit to their parents or some of their parents. Not every house is the same, obviously, but it's bringing them in and making them part of that community where they're making shabbos together because they're about to have thirty people over. I don't right. Know. It's cool. So it's interesting because this actually goes to the part of me that very few people know about, which is... That, You're Chabad. That, no, no, <laughs> I'm not Chabad. I don't know what I am. But I, I will... The part of me is that most people know that I'm like the love guy. It's like yeah. a ton of love and community. And like, I mean, most, if you know who I am, you know that that's my thing. But I do believe in order to be a healthy person, 
you need a very healthy mix of love and also someone believing that you could do massive things yeah so it's mm. and it has to be a mix it can't just be like i love you i love you i love you i love you but there's no what i call the masculine part which is go climb the tree go fall go go take risks expectations and, right the expectations with which in chabad it's like all right you're nine go put this filling on your teacher like yeah. and they've written and they have directives from their from the rebbe like go do this like right. you know it's incredible what they're able to accomplish. Right. So they have massive, massive confidence. They really, really That's do. what it is. It's confidence, by the way. You, you nailed it. It's They have just... You know how hard it is to go over to someone on the street in New York City who's walking 17 miles per hour, clearly on the way, so on the way and try to stop them and ask them if they want to put on tefillin? Yeah. I love the arrogance of it also because it's like, right? are you Jewish? Like, excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like an insulting me? question. I'm going like, to get a bagel. <laughs> like, what are you asking me? Like, a question? Are you Jewish? What? <laughs> You'd like to terminate? Like, we're picking people out. Yeah, they that. do it in such a, in such a, I don't know, such a respectful way. I, I, I actually, I, I went to Crown Heights. Um, how was my, my, gran, my grandparents grew up in Crown Heights. My grandfather was Reb Nissen Gordon. Right, that's what I want to ask you about. He was a Baltfield in 770. His father was Reb Yerchen and Gordon. He was, he was a free, the grab, he was a guy by in 770. He was a, uh, a close chaver of the Friedrich Rebbe, the Rebbe, the sixth Lubavitch Rebbe, and also the seventh Lubavitch Rebbe. So it was a very close, a very close relationship. You're My the real deal. Gej Chabad. We Gej, baby. Part of the OGs. You don't, um, if you know, you know. Yeah, right? there's, there's a story of when the Friedrich Rebbe came, was coming to America. Um, he was on a boat on the way to America, and, he's, and he called ahead to the Hasidim. He said, tell my friend, tell my friends to meet me at the port. And I said, okay, who is your friend? And he said, Rabbi Yochanan Gordon, which is my great grandfather. Oh. So that, that's, uh, we also, it's also, by the way, I don't mean to blow your world, but it's also the great grandfather. He's also the ancestor, I don't know if it's the grandfather, great grandfather of Benny Friedman, of Abram Fried. Really? Honest Friedman. They're all from the same guy? They're, so sh they're, I hope I don't botch this. <laughs> Their grandfather is Shalom Bear Gordon, who is. Oh man, my family's gonna kill me. I think he's the brother of Rabbi Yochanan Gordon. Sean Bear Gordon was the brother of Yochanan Gordon. So it's great uncle, whatever. They're, they're related. We're all okay. one family. We're all part of the same family. All part of the same family. We're all part of the same family. Yeah. Rabbi Manastriman married. Rabbi Manastriman married a Gordon, Sean Bear Gordon's daughter. So Manas and his kids. Avram oh, okay. a little more removed, but Manas and his kids. They switched on the. They're on the pat. They're on the, the part of the family. Wow. And you guys, you guys were always doing like, uh, I don't know what the right word is, like newspaper men and stuff like that. Oh, my, that? That's, my what parents. I, that's what I saw. Your so how was my, my, your parents. My, my grandfather was a, was a journalist. He was, um, he actually worked with Rabbi Wabi Jacobson's father. Uh, they had a close relationship. They worked together on a, on a newspaper called. The Alga Miner. Alga. Before the Alga Miner, it was the Morning Tug. It was the. Okay. And then, and then they, then they did the Alga Miner together. And um, that's what my, my grandfather was known for. He's a, he's a Yiddish writer, a very talented Yiddish writer. Um, I never met him. He passed away way before I was born. My father started a newspaper late in, I'd say late in life, you know, like in his 40s. Um, he started the Five Towns Jewish Times, which is still a good, thriving newspaper in the world. Right. And uh, so I grew up with media, like in yeah. the family. And I didn't know how much. It's like you know you you can't you you can't run away from the things that's in your blood. And so I thought I was going to do things. I thought I was going to be this, be that. But ultimately, it catches up to you. What your Did you try other things? Oh yeah, when I was when I was young, um, I had my eyes set on being a sports agent. Okay. I wanted to be in sports management, and. I remember watching this like documentary on on ESPN about like the dotted line. It was like, whoa, this is like, I love sports, and I and I was never a guy. I never wanted to be that guy in school who just like hawking sports, but I wouldn't be making money on those guys in hawking sports, you know. So, so I pursued it. I, I remember like, I, I I actually like I I skipped twelfth grade, and I started started like, and I enrolled in a college early because I needed to get my bachelor's in order to get certified to be an MBA to be a, a, a sports agent. You were in a rush. You I was were, in a rush. I don't know yeah. what I was rushing towards. Yeah. I wasn't going anywhere, but I was I was definitely in a rush. 
I also felt like I was wasting time in high school. You are. Yeah, I, I shouldn't tell this to all high school. Twelfth grade is just like my daughter graduated a year early. They, I was like, "What would it take to get out of high school early?" They were like, "Oh, she has to take one test." Yeah, I'm like, "You telling me I was gonna pay for a whole <laughs> other year for one test and then she's done?" So I, so I did this. I did similar. I like, I like realized, okay, I got to take my my ACT or SAT. Got to take my English region. Got to take a bunch of stuff. So I took it all in eleventh grade. It happens to be I was in base medrash for you know a year after as well where I you know, got some amazing rebellion, but I was very, very strongly pursuing this this field, this craft. And I, I, got, a, I got like an internship at a place where it was just like, just just watch film, just watch players and see if any of them stand out. And I was like, just, and then I ended up, uh, ended up, you know, long story short, I became certified as yeah. an NBA agent. And is there like tests for that? Now there is. Okay. Now there is. Now there is a test. You have to take a test in order to pass. You have like to know the CBA. But like I was, I I remember like I printed. I thought you just have to say, "Let me help you." you know, show how, me the money. Yeah. Show me the money. <laughs> yeah. No. But like I, uh, I remember like going through the CBA, which is like the collective bargaining agreement of the NBA. It's like a thing this big. It's just like it, it's like crazy. It's like a business. Like these guys, how much money they're allowed to get paid, and this and that, and that, and that. crazy. Um, but I did it, and. Um, at my peak of it, I was by the NBA draft, and we had a the firm I was working with. We had a client got drafted by the Knicks, and I was sitting with him, and it was cool. It was nice. It was very exciting. I'd go to his games, and uh, pick him up from the airport sometimes, and try to get him some sponsorship deals and endorsements and stuff like that. Um, I had a client myself who I recruited in college and ended up signing and. And uh, he, we signed him a deal with the OKC Thunder to be on their training camp. And he ultimately got cut and ended up going to play in Spain, which is a whole market, which is great. And he's, he's still there. Um, but all while this is going on, just my heart was being tugged in a different area. And it's a very hard industry to hold on to if you're not all in. Really? Yeah, you have to be all in. You have to be all in. You yeah, I mean, to. I only know that one movie. with the Jerry Maguire? Jerry Maguire. <laughs> It's such a good one. It's, it's I'd say it's honestly it's like a pretty it's pretty accurate the picture. Was it? Yeah. You have to be there for your clients because you know what like sounds like a twenty four seven thing. You if you're not there, I I remember being in the garden, and our client was there, and I was I was there, and I see him talking to. Who now is like the president of the Knicks, Leon Rose, or he's like, but at that point he was an agent with CAA, and like. You see him talking to them. I'm like, ah, you never know. Like, they're all if you're not steal. there. So yeah, it's really, it's like a really rough industry. Like, you got a two two week notice terminated. You just work three years for this guy, and you're banking on getting him to a new contract. And it's a really scary industry. Wow. Yeah. And your heart was not in it so much. At some, uh, you know what? Like sometimes I I like miss it a little bit, but I love what I do now. And my heart was pulled in the direction of being involved in, in uh, Torah content. I don't know why. But you kind of did similar idea. The whole idea of this meaningful, I'm going to take it a meaningful minute, or yeah. start a meaningful minute, right? Yeah, 2017, actually. March you're, 2017. You're like recruiting. You're recruiting yeah. meaningful people. Yeah. It's so funny. it's not so, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you ever thought no. of it as so different. <laughs> You maybe not signing them. I tell you, a lot them. of the things I learned about, I don't know, like communication, ideas, marketing, endorsements. I, I, com I totally, I put that all into the creation of Meaningful Minute. I, when I started Meaningful Minute, it was a hobby, and um, I'd like to say that it still is, although it's it's a business now, it's a company, yeah. and it's an organization, and we have staff and. And, um, but it's like, I, I figured if I'm going to run this like half, it's not going to reach its potential. I need to go all in. So like, I literally stopped everything else I was doing. I had, I had owned like a sports league in the five towns and I was busy with that every weekend and sold that stopped at the sports agency stuff. Like it came a period of time where you have to renew your license. Right. I remember I just gotten married and I'm like sitting there with my wife. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And she's yeah. like, what do, you, do you want to renew it? And I just, the first thing that came to my mind is no. Because, like, I want to burn the road. Because otherwise I'm going to just want to go back. 
Right. If I have that license. So you have to like sometimes like, you know, like that story, like burning the ships. Burning the ships. You know, greatest right. story ever. In South America? Yeah. For, uh, I think it's a lie, that story. You don't think it happened? I mean, uh, I mean, this, I, I see, read. this is where Ellie's supposed to check. Like, he's Jamie here. Like, Ellie, you're supposed, supposed to be supposed Jamie. To, supposed to burning be like, the ships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, check, check, <laughs> check the trip. Check, check the uh, podcast notes for uh, more information. I've <laughs> used I've used that story a million times, and I um, and I think it really. I don't know if it happened. You don't think it happened? Think the way we think it happened. I don't know. Did they, they all die? I have to look. No, they don't all die. It took over. Okay, so I don't know if he burnt the ships. You don't. You think it just be? They what? just went in and took over. They yeah. burned the, burn the ships to like wrap pieces. Like, who made up? Like who made that up? I don't know because they wanted to like romanticize like what they did or like they didn't okay, have a choice. It works. Uh, maybe I'm wrong because yeah. I, I remember reading that it was. You know, I, everything you learn in history eventually you find out is not true and it really yeah. There stinks. was this. There was this. Uh, there was this guy. He was on the Celtics when they won a bunch of championships. His name was Brian Scalabrini and. <laughs> he was by the press conference. They asked him, "Like, what are you gonna like? What do you? Like, how does it feel? Like, you didn't play a minute this entire NBA Finals, but you have a ring. You won." He's like, "Listen, man, in five years, I'm gonna tell my kids I came off the bench. In ten years, I'm gonna tell them I started. In twenty years, I'm gonna tell them I hit the game winning shot, and no one will know. <laughs> and no one <laughs> will know. know. You know, like no one's gonna be like, oh yeah, Brian Scalabrini did. You know, besides for That's us on this great. podcast, you know, like we just said it. We set the record straight. He didn't play a minute." But yeah, like you know, as Kamala Harris likes to say, the passage of time. <laughs> you ever see that? No. no. She, there's, there's a clip. I can never understand a word she's saying. You gotta get a screen over here, and Ellie's just gonna like all my references I'm saying. He's gonna throw. This? You've seen the video, right, Ellie? No. No. Come By on. the way, that what you're talking about is that I'm in this middle zone where I'm just still doing this as a hobby. Yeah. I don't have my screen. My cameras aren't good enough. Like it's like I'm in the middle. Like. Make a choice, right? I see you saying that in your head. You're like, you know, where are you? Yeah, like make pick a pick a lane, bro. I I, I mean, <laughs> I don't think you should. I think like I can't. I'm doing you can't live. Things. You can't leave the stuff you're doing, but right. you could incorporate it into what you're like. I I I'm doing a few things within my thing, right? right? But like, you could incorporate it on a more serious basis. What that means is, you get good cameras, you get good lighting. Right. You get LE internet so you could Google things during a podcast, you know? You don't have internet? <laughs> <laughs> you know, his hands are tied behind his back over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. Somebody asked today, somebody we were talking about, like, eventually people are just going to be like, oh, Sonny, he's the guy from the from the podcast, you know? People are going to forget that we actually, like, we run a sober living home. Right. Other things that are going on, and this is, like, uh, your side pet project, but... <laughs> yeah, but this could be the means to, you know, this is like, you know, R Joe Rogan, is, it's like so funny. He's he's really into a lot of different things. He's into UFC. He's into uh, taking those alpha brain and different vitamins. He's he's into cold plunges. Works and, out, cold and fasting. plunges. He's very like weird dude. Right. Like it's. He loves talking. He's, he is a, he is a that enthusiast more than a podcaster. Right. That's what he, you know, you are, you are our village, our place. Like those are the stuff you live for. And your podcast is just a way to communicate to the world. All right. I never understood the term a podcaster. It's another term for a human, like podcaster. I mean, just, you're a podcaster. What does that mean? You have a, you make your living podcasting. What is a po what is podcasting? Isn't that what a podcaster? This talking in front of a mic. Well, you're interviewing people. Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking to people. Everyone does it every single day. Not everyone talks to the most meaningful people okay, in the Jewish so, community. Okay, so I talk to some pretty cool people. I mean, not everybody talks to Ben Shapiro. That's true. That's but, what I'm saying. But still, like, I don't know every. Ugh. What am I getting at? Someone bail me out here. You know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I don't know because we made up a word podcast. Like, but in the old days, you're running the Tonight Show. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a job. Those are the highest paying jobs in the world. You're doing the Jewish that's Tonight Show. That's entertainment. That's showbiz. That's what you're doing. That's I'm in showbiz. You don't like that. You don't want to say that. I don't Shoot. know. I don't, I don't care to say that. I, don't <laughs> I, I just I just feel like. I just feel like when I'm making challah like Friday and I'm like kneading the dough. You're a chef. And I know I <laughs> You're a baker. And I'm listening to the podcast where you're, you know, talking about some guy who was in jail or whatever or yeah. something like that. I'm entertained. I mean, maybe I'm learning something along the way. But it's it is entertainment, isn't it? 
I guess. I just, I don't know. I feel like the whole, like, a podcaster is such an interesting, it's like someone who goes out to eat food is like, he's an eater. Like, what? No, he's a human being who what needs about to a, eat. What about, what could he call it, a journalist? A podcast is like a journalist. How about that? You can, you can swallow that. That's Ellie, a big thing. Ellie, what's family. the definition of podcaster? I'm going to look it up. I think there's, there's <laughs> You didn't look it up yet? <laughs> We're talking about this for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, you're psychoanalyzing why Nahi doesn't want to be. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with Nahi here. You, <laughs> you picked that up. conversation. Oh, I'm like, Nahi, what? what's going on in your family that you have a hard time saying, I'm a podcaster? I'm, I'm a podcaster. Which podcaster does it remind you of that in your life? What? Oh. <laughs> I did that to Ali yesterday. He almost killed me. He was angry at somebody. I'm like, who's he remind you of? And he's like, oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah. We're on a car ride. It's 12 o'clock at night. You're going to not do this to me right now. I don't know. I, I, I just, I say anyone can be, I don't, you think it takes a special skill to be a podcaster? Heck yeah. You're amazing at it. I appreciate I'm very, that. very impressed with it. I mean, I'm really impressed. I, I, well, no I will tell training. you, when I sat down with Wow, I think it's all experience. I was like, I'm an amateur. It, it was it was humbling, but I, I was an amateur. Because if he was on Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan would have had, you know, would have, it would have been a conversation. He still would have got all that awesome stuff out. But to me, I was like, oh, I'm way over my head here. This is, but I'm saying, I watch you, you, you got, you, if you got, look at my early interviews from a couple of years ago, I was, you were an amateur. I was an amateur. And it's so it's I'm experience. trying. That's what I'm trying to say. And my point is that it it's comes, a skill. It's experience. It's developed. And I, I don't think it can be learned. I think it, it, you can't. It's not like something you could read in a book. You could Google how to be a podcaster. You could try to read. Every, it's You're not going to be a better. Um, I think it's like being a good conversationalist, which is funny because I don't think I'm a good conversationalist. <laughs> I don't know if it's being a good conversationalist. Right, it's different. I don't know if it is. I'm a great conversationalist. You're I've good been podcast. interviewing you're people. You're, you're doing great right now. I think I got an upper hand because I've been a therapist for so long and dealing with people, but it is still a brand new skill. Like, I am trained that if somebody is going off on a train of thought. You could redirect them? Well, I may redirect them, but I'm saying as a therapist, I may let them go for a while so that they could get to where they need to get to. You're also charging you're regardless. Pod- so. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I'm like, if you keep going, it's a double session. I'm just letting <laughs> you know. Is running. <laughs> if you keep talking, um, the no, I'm saying a podcaster is needs to be there with the person. It's, I think it's even cooler than a journalist. The journalist is invisible. Yeah, a podcaster. If you're a podcaster, is invisible. Like we see, what's the guy? Lex uh, what's Friedman. It? Lex Friedman. He's amazing, right? Yeah. Lex Friedman is a great interviewer, but it is very obvious that he's doing the interview. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he is he is a personality in himself. Yeah. He's asking questions, but his questions are telling you how smart he is. Yeah. So a that. podcaster is not like a journalist who just says like just prompts you to say the perfect things. You know, it's funny. It's very it's made cool. Me think about it's like, you know, like it, I saw somewhere that every NBA player wants to be a rapper and every rapper wants to be an NBA player. Like they always have. That's why you have a lot of players that go into rap and a lot of rappers, NBA also, we can always get on the court and playing. I feel like I look at other uh, skills and I'm like, oh, man, like like I look at now these people um, and music. Right. And I just um, whether it's singing or or. Or even playing like this. There's this kid Ari Edding, Edinger on YouTube. He plays guitar. He's okay. a huge kid. Kill like oh my gosh! Like that. That's a talent I wish I had. It's a skill set I wish I had. And a journalist being able to write. I read articles. I'm like that was beautiful. That was like poetic. And it's and it's like, I don't know. I wish I had those skills. This that's fascinating because you are. You are of the top five best podcasts in the Jewish community. And there's something about it that you're, I'm like, you know, like, Thank I can't you. believe he came on my podcast Aww. type of thing. And you don't realize <laughs> that, which is good, maybe. It's because I live in the middle of nowhere. Stay grounded. Well, you staying grounded. Well, that's good. Yeah. But, but you know what? I, I, um, you know what my pet peeve is? Okay. My pet peeve is people who take, them to, take themselves too seriously. I try not to take myself too seriously. Doesn't mean not take yourself seriously, right? Like you have to, like you should not wear a colorful T-shirt. No, like that's that. fine. Like, like that, you that, should I be a little more serious than that. No, that's it's an externality. <laughs> like I don't really like. That's not. That doesn't really. That I'm doesn't just, do it. But I don't know. 
there are people there are some people who just take themselves too seriously like relax calm down like it's okay you're a me like so okay so i'm a good podcaster right. it doesn't mean i can't talk to i'll if anybody wants me to come on their podcast i'll go any like i'll go almost anywhere besides for a couple of places but not because i'm too busy or too big or anything like that like i'm happy to talk to anybody anytime right and sometimes I'll, I'll go somewhere for Shabbos or whatever. And, and like, especially with teenagers, they'll be like, oh, my God. I'm like, what? What's up? Like, just talk. Like, I'm a regular person right? who just talks with a camera and a mic most of the time. You know. But this own. goes back to our earlier conversation. Yeah. If you didn't feel that way, you'd be a jerk. Yeah, probably. I'm saying that's what happened. I'm sure there are times where I was. I think the first couple of years of doing it, like, when it first started taking off, I was very unprepared for like what that looks like and but yeah now I I think it's like it's so flattering it's so nice okay so I wanted to ask you more about your podcast but now now you made me think of another thing how do you deal with the fact that like you go places and everybody recognizes you and you I think I I think I could deal with it better than my my like my family whether like be it my my brother, his wife, my wife, like they, I'm the youngest in my family, uh. so like, to them it's so odd, it's so weird. Like we went to Isha Rebo concert in Madison Square Garden, and like, it, we couldn't like sit for more than five minutes. You know, it was great. It was just a lot, a lot of, it was a lot, and um, they're just like rolling their eyes, like why, like, because they just kept people just kept coming yeah, and they're just like what is like what are people like what are people seeing you, <laughs> <laughs> like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but um, dude, you know this is this is. I don't mean to get Devartora on us, but I had Yawai on, so I, I yeah. got I in I grabbed some. The entire story of Safer Boracious is a story of the younger child having this like, like being amazing, and the other ones wanting to murder them. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying, you're saying I'm about to be sold. Yeah, it's going to be. you sold if you're lucky. Maybe dude. I was already sold. I don't if know. If you're lucky. If Ruben <laughs> comes up, around. I up here somehow. <laughs> yeah, you lucky if you're sold. Yeah. I don't know, but it's like. Um, no, it's saying that the interesting thing is the first. This is the explanation. The first family that the younger brother had it all and everybody didn't want to kill him is the first family of Judaism. It's Moshe and Aaron. I. Aaron was his older brother. Miriam yeah. was the older sister. He got everything, and they loved him like crazy. Yeah. So that's the family that brought it in. That's the Devartar right there. Like, he tell your family, you got to stop looking down on me like that. They don't look down on <laughs> no, me. I think I'm they're kidding. just like, I think they're just like, they're just like, this is like, you're such a, like, a, you're such a little nerd. Who, like, who are these people? Like, I have a sister who's 40, over 40 years old, and I'm her youngest brother, and she's like, Who's, who are these? Uh, you what, know, is like, what is going on here? Like people are reaching out to her to get to me. She's like, well, why? Like, it's funny. I don't know. It's it's pretty. Um, funny. It's pretty you funny. have a sister who does all the cooking stuff. Someone yeah. just literally talking about it today. I do. I followed her officially. Kiss the kosher today. cook. Yeah. What is it? Kiss the kosher cook. Yeah. I think it's like a pun or a reference to something. Is I'm that not appropriate? Sure. No. I'm I don't know. No, I'm I think it is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I wonder if it. kiss is a is an acronym for keep it simple, stupid. Is that, in that it? one? Is it, it is. Is it? In in recovery, that's what we say. So maybe that's what it is by her also. I don't I, think, I don't think so, but it should be. It should be. <laughs> it's probably. Maybe. So let me ask you about the about yeah. your actual podcasting. Because yeah. I I would not have known what you're saying right now. I said, I'll start a podcast. Yeah. I talk to people all day, and it's gonna be a great conversation. Mm -hmm. And in some ways that's true. Right. But I know the difference between a great podcast and a not a great podcast now. And I'm awed by the fact that like podcasts are great. Like there's there's stuff going on, and everybody just doesn't kind of see it. Like, oh, that's an interesting conversation. Yeah. But they don't realize that that there's a reason why you you're mean? getting the numbers and they're not. I could analyze it. What's the question? The question I really wanted to ask is not connected to that statement. Is the question is is that you started with meaningful yeah. minute and now you do meaningful people. My question was in the time you're doing it. Have you, has your mind been blown by some of these people? Have your experiences like by the people I met, the interviewing people? Yeah, like where, like what are the most like significant like mind blowing experiences that you've had? You have a very interesting thing that it's all meaningful people, which is like, yeah. 
which is really interesting because all these people are phenomenal in some way I, or I another. I think that, you know, hope to interview uh, hundreds of more people. I think that everyone's got, everyone's got that inside of them. And the people who I interviewed have been blessed in ways to express it. And then we all get to see it on the outside. But I've, it's the best part of what I do, um, meeting some of these people. And and sometimes the greatest interviews, I'll try to. Let me hear the greatest. That's what I want to know. Right. I'm curious um, what, like, touched you. Like, what, like, which I ones. I to say it was Sonny's. Yeah. Was First of all. Sonny Roman. I'll tell you, it's, all, it's actually funny. It's actually funny. Um. Kiwi Perlman. Yeah. When I interviewed him, he's your younger brother also. Yes, he is. So you see we're we're doing it. Go to you can go to counseling with the rest of my family. That's right. But well, And we're all therapists, well, by the way. He said that was the best way. I wonder if there's a worse name you could have picked. <laughs> <laughs> Kiwi Perlman. Oh, he said I didn't say that was the best one. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't say that the best, yet. Uh, the best was definitely Kiwi. Kiwi. <laughs> now I gotta throw him in a pit. <laughs> the <laughs> Going. Make sure there's good spices. You know? That's amazing. Um, I, I'm not saying I'm not, I didn't say he's the best. I one. will. I will tell you that I think I was the most surprising one. Why? I don't know. I walked in. You were like, "You're not Kiwi at no, all." <laughs> I know exactly. I uh, see. Like, that's the thing. Okay. I know. I don't prepare a lot for podcasts. I don't. I, I'll, it's a disaster if I sit there with questions and right. start reading questions. I can't do that. But I know who I'm having on. Okay. Right? I know who they are when they're walking through that door. I've seen you speak before I had you. I've been right. to speeches where you speak. Oh, okay. I, and I have a very good memory. So like. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So I saw the guy with the tie-dye shirt and I said, I still want him. I still want him. Yeah. Nice. But Kiwi, a guy like we Kiwi. Tell me about Kiwi. Yeah. He, the, he's just a, he's just a beautiful person. And that's something he would say. And that's something he says about you and his family. Right. They're just beautiful people. You know, like he, he just. He exuded such calm, and and that was probably still the time where I was very nervous as a podcaster. Really, and him walking in there is just very. It was very calming. I'll tell you a moment to me that I thought was pretty cool. I'll tell you about other people. I ain't, I ain't say Kiwi Pro was the best podcast I ever did. I think it you was it's very good. That. And people ask me, and I say, yeah, you got to listen to that episode just because I think it's super cool. But he was his son was there off camera. Oh really? Yeah. Shalom came with him. I must Sh say. Shalom, the is oldest one or the what's the other one's name? No, um, I, th I think Shalom. Black okay. hair. Bl yeah, he got. He got. He he'd come hair. back from Israel. Um, it's that, Shalom. It's Shalom. Yeah. Baby so, Shalom. and Kivi was talking. Do I have to say Doctor Perlman or? You have to say Doctor. Yeah. Sorry. No, I'm kidding. Say <laughs> Kivi. I'm, I'm really kidding. So is, he, yeah. Kivi was talking about something, and, and like he said, like. You know, I love my son. He's one of the most beautiful people I know in the world. And he's like looking at him. And I was like, that is so, that is so nice. That is so nice that he was able to just do that. You know, just talk about that. Talk like that. Direct. To, and it's just like, it might seem like such an insignificant, like, okay, yeah, he's his father. But it was, su it was so, it was such a real moment. And I think that's the thing. You're, he's super authentic. Yeah. When you're able to do a podcast and sit down with someone and you could just you, sh you feel like you're talking to a soul, and you f you, you feel the authenticity, and you're not getting a bubba misa, you're not getting some like, what, <laughs> right, <laughs> which happens, Th that's special. It is interesting because there is a place where when someone gets too good at it, their authenticity becomes like they know how to answer the question. Too good at what? Too good at, Too good at like being interviewed. Yeah. Like they're 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 saying they're on PR mode. They're on PR mode, so they you can't you know when very, you get it. You have to like Ramosha Weinberger. There's no PR mode. No, he is a neshama who's walking around and wearing it on his sleeve. Did you get to talk to? I don't yeah, see that yeah. One. I I, the most recent oh, time wow. I interviewed him was right after October seventh. Really, yeah, Momo interviewed him and like that was such an important conversation. There's another yet also lives in Muncie area. It's actually. Too, one of the most like amazing Brooklyn. on Moshe Weinberger, besides for all the yeah. other things, you could actually get through to him. What's that? Voice notes. It's amazing. I was shocked. I like, I texted, I texted like a text, dear Rabbi Moshe Weinberger, Shlita. and he like sends me a voice note, like, hey, Nachi. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. But that's the thing about most people. They're very, most, like, most good people are just approachable and relatable and, right. and, and just like, 
No, but it's amazing because you, I Cause know super there busy. are thousands yeah. of people trying to get a, just yeah. get a question in, you know? Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And he just answers everybody. On top of being awesome, he's just completely awesome. I just find that to be, in yeah. my field, that's the biggest complaint I have people have, which is I just can't get through to them. And I feel terrible about it. And, you know, sometimes it happens with me too, but I'm saying it's like people are suffering. We need to create more leaders. I think that's yeah. like the answer. Like, we we need we need to have we need to create more more you're not going to create another Marshall Weimager but you could create another so and so and who's going to be him you know like like if everyone's reaching their fullest potential how many are there how many Marshall Weimagers are there right. maybe what we're seeing is a person who is who is reaching his potential maybe that's what's clicking and making him so incredible to speak to well this you're touching on one of my pet peeves which is that I love what Yisro said? Is that you, Moshe Rabbeinu can't be Never heard there of a Yisro for everybody. Quote? What? Could we get a Yisro quote? Like, uh, what are you talking about? Yisro said, yeah. Moshe, you're working too hard. <laughs> okay. Such a good father in law. Yeah. He's like, what are you doing? My wife barely sees you. My, my daughter barely sees you. Anyway, I turned him into a Jewish father in law. Yeah. The, um, he, he said, hey, every, every, everybody needs somebody to talk to. Yeah. So we got to break this. Now, it can't be one guy. This is really a pet peeve of mine that I think we broke. I think if you really go into every family, there is a wise man in each family. It's just we all separated and went different directions. Well, so, you, well, your, your family is going to stay in the same block? I don't know. I, well, I maybe family is not necess it's, necessarily it, a genetic thing. Maybe family is just the people who you uh, surround yourself with. I it, think families, we're pack animals. Family is, 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 goes further than blood. I mean, as a Jewish people, we're all family. We believe that. That's true. But maybe a Selah Harab means that every community needs to, like, every, I don't know. Maybe it's not just like, of course, it means like every individual. You need to have a Rav. But we, what we've, I think what you're, what you're touching upon is we find ourselves, um, admiring and all vying for the attention of one person and we're hoping that that person can guide a hundred thousand people when it's just not possible that person's not going to be able to speak to you they're just too busy right so you're saying we need more of those people i'm saying that it, there are more of those people they're just not taking the role what does that mean there's more of those people they're not that person meaning like Moshe Rabbeinu was the top guy yeah. he's sort of saying hey we should have more judges. There's no judge so like you're saying Moshe people aren't stepping into the spotlight. It we split up the family. I, I give you an example where, back in the day, most houses had a grandparent living in the house. Like that's how it was. Yeah, people would get old. I think the pensions were different and stuff like that. So parents, grandparents needed to be there. They needed to be in the house. There was always a grandparent in every house. Right. You want to ask Ellie why he's yawning? Yeah. Did I say something boring? Your grandfather yeah. used to do that in your What's house. What's that? What happened? In <laughs> that is unacceptable. Our producer is yawning. Are we boring? You were in the car last night, really, really late. That is true. Mind if I throw this? Mind if I throw this book? I would say you can throw that book. That's <laughs> a great book. Benjamin Graham. Yeah, it's one of my favorite books. Really? The truth is because I've heard this like <laughs> oh. <laughs> so many times. Really? It's good. I'm trying to brainwash my whole staff. Yeah. Here. I'm trying to get them all thinking you're exactly you need, you like should, me. So you're saying. But like, the ah, I don't know. Like that's also, I don't remember what. What, I was what, what if a grandfather? I just heard this guy. What if yawning. a grandparent is is toxic? Like what if a grandparent is? I don't think that's a. Well, that's uniform. this is what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is when you were in a clan and there were 40, 50 of you, and like you guys were all in a clan, cult, and you didn't have to go anywhere. You could you could absorb a couple of toxic people. I don't think there was no toxic people. You're saying like but, home alone, like the uncle was a was a weirdo, but like they were yeah, 30. but he's our weirdo. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like as long as it doesn't reach levels. If of, he, if the yeah. weirdo is the only guy who makes a relationship with you, you're in trouble. Yeah, you maybe know what I'm saying? Maybe you're the second weirdo. You're this. You're gonna be the <laughs> next weirdo. But what I'm saying is, in a family, when everybody has all these different roles, and I think it's because I missed it in my life a lot. I didn't have grandparents, uncles, aunts. I didn't really have that in my life, yeah. or we weren't very close. So. There's all these roles and they're not being taken care of. You could absorb some unhealthy people. We use the words like toxic because 
Like, I call my grandfather, and he's toxic. And so I hang up the phone, and I never see him again for another six months. What do you months. suggest? Uh, well, I, well, I don't know what I suggest. I'll tell you why. Because we can't turn back the clock. Okay. You so can't what, say, you know, okay, we got to make ashrams, and everybody's got to yeah, move Yeah, but I can't in. imagine that you're suggesting that we all should live within Dalaramas of our families and all our extended families. And I, we should have 40, like, this, because this is not Muncie anymore. This is... Gordonville, and this is Perlmanville. Honestly, like, the, first of all, that's how it used to be, and, and I think it still is in, like, you know, villages, like, way out in the third world. Um, Africa, India, stuff like that. They still have these villages, and that's how it was. So I don't think it's so crazy. Um, they're better off? In terms of mental health, they're much better off. Really? All the statistics talk about, like, the mental health issues, like... People from the third world don't even understand their mental health issues. So let me ask you a question. Could this be solved in a, like, I don't have grandparents anymore. All my grandparents passed on. So right. could this be solved in a, in a, with, with friends and family with like. I think that's what we have to do now. Friends. Meaning I think it has to be. The problem is my loyalty to friends. Like I, I have a child. I, I have a child. All four of these kids. They have me till the day I die. I yeah. could be a hundred and one of my kids would be eighty and say, Listen, I need a loan for a house. I want to figure out how to do it. Yeah. That's just how it is. So there is something very powerful about blood. You know, like we you know, we can make fun of our siblings and do all that, but don't mess with my siblings. We are you know, you could joke about your siblings, I could joke about my siblings, but no one else allowed to joke about my siblings. Well, of you know course. what I'm saying? Like that's a clan. We protect each other, we're there for each other. There's tons of toxic stuff going on. How do you adopt that feeling for, like, the greater Jewish people? So that's really the problem is that I think we have to break down to smaller groups. I don't think it could be the greater Jewish people and the only rabbis, or, you know, Ramosha here and Chaim there. And they, we have our, like, there are thousands of us. We're all lost in this, in this sea of, like, who's my guy. The only time, I was actually telling you this the other day, meal train, where, where everybody gets... Um, you know, if someone gets yeah. sick or if someone has a baby and then we all get together and feed each other, like that should be that should be somewhere instituted closer into what we do in our real life. Like not when someone's sick, like not even when sick or to understand the concept that there is no family on that block that doesn't need a meal train this week. There is no family. I, there is nobody who's I got know, it. I know, but like, I, I think we're so far removed from what was that it becomes like s socially unacceptable for you to walk over to dinner with someone's house and say, "You guys need dinner tonight, don't you?" Well, like, you, that's that's not that's not that's not okay. I bet you. Yeah. That if your neighbor came over and said, "Listen, it's Wednesday night. Don't make dinner. I'm making you dinner," and they just dropped off dinner, it'd be weird once. You Second say. time, you'd be like, "Oh my god, we're getting dinner on Wednesday night, guys." <laughs> It's movie night. We're just getting dinner from the Jacobsons yeah. over there. And, like, yeah. it wouldn't take a lot to not be weird. Like, even, like, let's say if a community says, let's do, let's do our block does shower shirts together. Like, like there are. Yeah. You no, know, I, I, so it's part, it's, it's, you know, I, I moved to a new city like a year ago. And it's not, it's not, not why I moved. I, I love the five towns and it's a great place. And I would have been happy there, here, anywhere. Not anywhere, but, you know, maybe Baltimore. Maybe Baltimore. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, <laughs> walk around and see those guys dressed up as me. <laughs> you know what they say about Baltimore? The people on the way to say it. Don't judge a guy from Baltimore until you walk a mile in a shop of sneakers. <laughs> oh, man, you're going to get canceled. I'm getting canceled. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can say it. I've um, never said that to a Baltimore person. I didn't love it. They do love it? I think they know that joke. I mean, that's their favorite joke. That's amazing. That's awesome. No, but great. respect to Baltimore. They're like the most popular out-of-town city. They are. So, like, good for them. They're, like, almost being considered in town. Close. Close. We don't know. No. There's too many volunteer firemen to actually be in an in-town city. You know what I mean? You know so much more about I'm sorry. Baltimore. My brother lives there, so I can have fun with this. Very good. Very good. Um, what, <laughs> what was I about to say? I was, what, 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 what were we on? Yeah. I had a thought. I had a thought. What was it? It was a. You're talking about moving from New City. Oh, so oh, yeah. New City. So, like, where I lived prior, it's so funny because it really goes. To, I, so, I dove in by uh, KMH or by Yossi Zagatinsky. Hundreds of people in that Unbelievable. Show. And he is an Eloy. He's like unbelievable. Opens his mouth and just wisdom, 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 wisdom. And Rosh Hashanah is amazing. Yom Kippur is otherworldly and it's incredible. 
Um, but for like my age, you know, I was young and a lot of the guys there are maybe a little older than me, different stage of life. I wouldn't really call it like community. Right. I was walking from like 20 minutes away. Five towns in general, I think it's, 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 it's tough because you have like 40 shuls in, in like a mile radius. So it's like, you, you don't, you're not, you could be anywhere. So that, 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 that can't be community. Right. Cause you could, you could just leave and fall in anywhere. So where we moved is there's like 20 from families there right now, 25 from families. And this doesn't happen anymore because we grew a little bit more, but the first use of us and it was like, Hey, minion count who's home for Shabbos. Right. One, two, three, four. And you go to shul and then like, shall should us. We're all staying there. We're all there talking. And it's like, Someone might say, oh, it's so boring. It's just you and 20 fam. But no, it's really nice because we, I, I, I cannot knew nobody there before I moved there, which is right. so unlike me to do. Right. I knew nobody there, but I am so close with, with so many of them now. I'd call them some of my, you know, closest friends who I know for a year, but right. people who are, I like, and they're good people and they're nice people. And, and it's because we are there together in a community building something together Opening in a basement, you know, right. and that's, and that's beautiful. And I was here in Kipper and it's the holiest day of the year. And we're in this basement that probably has mold and you know, <laughs> God knows what else. And we're davening and it's just us, you know, like there was a, there was a slogan that the Golden State Warriors had when they were started like winning games, you know, they were awful team and they started slowly becoming good. And their slogan was just us. It's us against the world, right? Us against the world. And that's the vibe of a community. Yeah, it's just us. So you even said it built into this that now it's getting bigger and it doesn't feel the same way. I said that. You. Well, it's not a little not, bit. We're not counting. About, the not minion. the counting minion, yeah. but that inevitably happens, which means I, know, I really love what you said, and I love. I actually think it's amazing yeah. that you started this little community and you, you know, a so bunch great. of people that just came together. Probably similar ages or is some yes, some no. Right, it's, it's a little bit of a, it varies a little bit. But the cool part is like, I didn't know these people. Right, I didn't know these people. Like, it, that sounds like a beginning of a horror movie. <laughs> You're moving to somewhere where right. you don't know anybody. You could be anybody moving there, and especially for I'm not like an extrovert. I'm pretty introverted. Right, and and like I I I don't I don't think that oh it's just the perfect people are moving there. I just think it's the it's the vibe of being in a community with people and building something. Okay, so how do we hold on to it? How do we hold on to it? I don't I, I, mean, I, I don't now think it's 30, what you're saying. 30, 40, 50, 100 families coming. Now you have four shuls. I don't think it's have, what you're saying. I don't think it's limiting the numbers. I don't know about it's limiting numbers. I'm just saying that what I've watched is that I mean, I mean, we're my community. I actually dive in a shul or Shlomo, which is the Kabbalah shul, which the community is unbelievable there that what we do for each other and yeah. together it's just beautiful um they have like a thing we're staying small and because we're not growing small i don't know if that's it's, it's a state not, of mind yeah so, but what inevitably happens is four shuls move in five shuls move in i nobody knows if you missed minion like if you if i could just stay home and nobody asked me where i was i'm officially out like i don't know how to say that like yeah. th that could happen my question, and this is the question that I'm like completely like seeking this answer all the time. And that's why I created our village and we have Mavaksham Anonymous I yeah. told you about, which I mentioned a bunch of times on the podcast, which is just our friends that get together. By the way, the sixth group just opened. Shh, I'm going to start one. You really should. I'm going to start one. You could join mine if you want. I'm just letting you know. How old are you guys? Uh, 30s. 40s? A little young. I'm the only 40s, I think. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I think the sounds only 40s. cool. I'm the oldest. Would you rather me join or start one? It's up to you, bro. It's up okay. to you. I'll think about it. Uh, I would love to have you join. It'd be amazing. Um, so we, we're creating all these moves, but we can't turn back the clock. So we are going to separate from our families. We are going to go out. I'm not yeah. going to be like, okay, guys, everybody get back to your families. Because those are going to be the creepy, weird families. It's not, I don't think. Yeah, it, you know we, those families on the Paysac program are wearing sweatshirts. With right. <laughs> yeah, you can't shove it back in the bottle. Like, it's it's out, yeah. right? But we're finding that communities could be built with people that are, like, just of similar beliefs. Yeah. 
But I think it takes a lot more work. What happens naturally in a family does not happen naturally if you're not in a, if you're in a community with each other. Yeah, it's gonna take more work. But I think yeah. that if I don't hear from one of my siblings, I'm like, what's going on? Are they depressed? It's just natural. Like yeah. it's it's what's happening. Like I'm. So gonna, what's the what's the what's the core of it? It's more of a question and a, with what's a the lot. Question? It, no, it's a question to me. It's not what so much it? a question. The question to me is how can we bring back the community, which is an you ancient know, I think thing. I have the answer. Let me hear the answer. You had mentioned, and I think this is spot on. I think you had said, if four shuls open up here and I don't have to show up and no one will know I'm there, then I could just sort of blend it and I'm, that's, that's where it ends. When you feel like you're not being counted anymore and then you start, you stop giving your all when you know that, right? Like, I interviewed Shirley Besser, and he he was taught he lives in Montreal. And he was saying one of the one of the great things about it is they, had, they I mean like they had a friend who had lost a kid, and there was no Masaskim. They're digging they're they're digging the grave, they're doing the chairs and this and that, and it's not like oh a tercha, it's the greatest thing in the world that they can do for their friend. I think that. If every single person buys into this concept of we need a community, you need to give your 100% all. That means if not me, then who? That means I'm going to go check the Arif. I'm going to go make sure that we have what we need. I'm going to go shovel the path. I'm going to go make sure everyone has to take it upon themselves to buy in fully and not adopt the, no matter what, no matter how many people move in, not adopt the ideology of, I can relax now. Um, I can, like, there's there's enough people now. I don't need to show up. There's only one I you. don't know what happens, because if you give me the opportunity to relax, I'm just going to relax. I mean, I, I'm, and I'm yeah, somebody who's very passionate there's, about there's, this. Yeah, but here's the deal. Like, there's nobody that's you, and that's your superpower, right? Right. So how can you think that, you could be replaced by by another 50 people moving in. You could relax. You're not bringing the flavor anymore. And what is that going to do? You have to re that's, that is what Bishvili Nivra means. It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that like, oh, the world's created for me. I can cut the line and get everything first. And hey, the world's created for me. It means that if you don't do this thing, who knows what will happen? Right. Like if you don't, if you don't go put on film today, who knows what's going to happen? Like, dude, you got to put on filling. The world's created for you. Right. If you're going to just say like, oh, I'm just going to chill and I'm not going to participate anymore in my community, which I built because there's so many people now, you're just, you're just pulling a piece out of the puzzle and it's not, it's not complete anymore. Right. Well, it's hard to imagine that. It's actually interesting. Okay, let me pull you back to the meaningful people, right? Yeah. All the meaningful people, if you really break it down, I think... They all did something beyond what's expected of them. Like we could all cruise through life. And they're all doing something beyond what's expected of them. Yeah. And they become leaders sometimes. And sometimes not leaders. Sometimes it's just a miracle in their in their being. They're being kind to their neighbors and this. I I, I feel like the message the message has to be that we all have to be meaningful people. Like, that's 100%. what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, everybody could write an Amuna book. Every single person. You look into your own life, you're telling me you can't... You Maybe can't. with ChatGBT. For sure with ChatGBT. That's <laughs> what I meant, obviously. Like, besides the grammar stuff. I've been writing my book for 20 years. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> but we all have, like, the stories, and we all have the things, and, like, every person... I can, I can, I can interview anybody. Right. I can interview anybody, and I promise you... Well, that's I, an interesting challenge. I, I got. Could I, you do? Yeah, I got. I went to Hank. Hank brought me out there to speak to their seniors. Right. So I went out there and I we spoke and it was sort of like a workshop and interviewing and communication and so I, I gave myself sort of this challenge. Really. Right. And I took this kid who who I felt like he was like the I don't want to say the class clown but he was like the guy making the jokes, and I like. I wanted to get him emotional. I just wanted to see if I can get him emotional. Okay. So I started talking to him. I said, when was the last time you cried? He said, I, I spoke to my aunt who, like, grew up with nobody. And, like, 
she like she's a rough woman like she she pushed away everybody that was close to her and i was just talking to her once and it just really made me sad and again it made me cry and like broke him down a bit wow and i feel like everybody has that yeah everybody has that like literally every single person in the world has something to talk about to talk to 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 speak on right I accept your challenge if that's what you want to do. Like, well, the challenge, well, the challenge would be interesting to have a series of meaningful people. It doesn't have to be on the regular channel, but like, literally, people could just sign up. Like, I would, you know, like I will talk to you. I like what you do. Like, I had you, did you at on Times Square. <laughs> yeah, you had me. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, that was the, the beginning times, of the challenge. The Times Square thing was cool. The right? Times Square things were like, oh, like this guy coming up all of a sudden. Like his story's amazing. Like, right? so, kids from Germany. What I think is that, and that's what my experience is, that, like, everybody is awesome, but they have to know it. They have to know that That's every- where you come in. Okay, so we that's can where do- where therapy comes in also. Like, I don't know, like, but you're saying not even therapy. It's where community comes in. Community they, makes people, you this is what feel amazing. Says, right? People yeah. need to feel needed. Yes. That's it. They need to feel needed. And if you are part of a shul or a community- where you cannot show up for three, four weeks and nobody says boo, or even if they, someone does say something and it's not it's not really compelling, then what is that person supposed to feel like? You're not feeling needed. I missed one job as I had to go to the hospital. I got like a kidney stone. I had to go. And the place almost like thought I, they were like, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, you know, I actually that, do I, that's community. I do have a story for you guys, but like <laughs> that's community. Yes. Where are you? Yes. And if, if if there's someone who isn't, if there's someone who's watching that lives somewhere, right. and they're in a shul, it doesn't mean like, if they could be in a shul where if you're not there, if someone is like, where are you? Maybe consider moving. Find find your community All where right. someone says, where are you? I love this. Let's read the title of your book. Where are you? Where are you? Ayaka, right? Was it? Ayaka. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Are you my mother? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> okay. What's your what's your dream with the podcasting with all the things? Like, what 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 is like? Wow, that would be amazing if that happened. Like, oh, where are you um, going to? Like, where? I my dream is to is to continue building this this company, Meaningful Minute, right? Which has its branches, meaningful people being one of them. I I think I am a firm believer that. God created all of this technology for us to use to reach the masses, the Jewish people all over the world. And um, I think that there's a lot of advances in technology that we can tap into and, and, um, and accomplish some pretty cool things that we've been pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into trying to do, like trying to get people to, you know, come, come more religious or, or, in, you know, experience a Shabbos. And like it, it, the thought of there being Jews living in the middle of Nebraska or Oklahoma who don't even know a thing about their Judaism because their grandmother had given it up or their great grandfather had given it up, whatever it was, it kind of like irks me a little bit. It's like, they're gonna they're gonna die and they're gonna be like a shy gig like they they didn't know like right. what do they know and whose fault is that it's ours like how does this how like how did we not reach this guy you know i at last purim i was in the five towns and i was by a suda and, and my neighbor na- my brother's neighbor walked into the house he lives in cedarhurst and this guy walks in he's, he's not religious and i asked him i said uh I said do you do you want to put on the fill-in He's like, eh. I'm like, I got, I got it right here in my car. Like, come on. Sure. Putting his phone on this guy. He's probably like 70 years old. And I said, well, I said, when was the last time you put on his phone? So when I was 13, this guy is, he hasn't put on his phone in 50 something years and 57 years. He's under our nose in Cedars, and this guy hasn't put on film in 50, 57 years. How many? How many? How many? How he many, lived in Cedars. Yeah. How many people are falling through the cracks? Right. And that's in Cedars, right under our nose. How many people are here in these blocks that are Jewish, that are just waiting for someone to tell to say to them, "Where are you?" It's deep. No. 
goes it's exactly amazing. it's exactly to what we're talking about right now. And where are you isn't a literal thing. It's it's also proverbial. Like the, everyone just wants to be asked, "Where are you?" And if you could find how to talk to those people and ask them, "Where are you?" The more people we can we get to come home. So the dream is 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 developing more ways to ask Jews, "Where are you?" All over the world, like that's that's the dream with technology. There's there's teenagers, and we're fi- we're seeing it now in Israel how there are there are chilonim gro- growing up, and and there's someone who spoke in front of the Knesset saying we were robbed, we are robbed. The, the Torah is ours, and Judaism is ours, and it's not in our books, and it's not taught in our public schools, and all our kids are growing up in Tel Aviv, and and they don't, and then it's not it's not given to us, and it's ours. So the robbery could stop now, and we could start giving it to them. And uh, Doron and Ido and whoever they are, they should start knowing what their lineage is and what their and what their uh, what their history is. And it's not tattoos and and uh, and good pizza, as she said. Like we're not known for our pizza. Like we're we're Jews. We're Jews, and that's like that is something that is so special. And if it took a war and it took an atrocity to happen on October 7th for us to finally come to grips with it and to try to just gather up as much as we can, then so be it. But it would be a shame if that happened and we didn't do it. That's the dream. That's an amazing dream. It's a big one. It's a really big one. And I think it's wise beyond your years. I really hope you get your dream, man. I'm pretty touched by it. It's, it's It's like... It's a chilling thing to think about, right? It's like you think about how many Jews are in the world, and sometimes we'll we'll feel like, yeah, but they're like not really Jewish. Like, how many times have you spoken to somebody and they misuse Jewish and religious? Yeah, like they're not Jewish. I mean, they're not religious. You know, God loves them just as much as He loves you. Right. What's gonna be the answer? I'm telling you, like, what's gonna be the answer? Like, what are we gonna say for ourselves if we have the ability to reach them? Right? Because if that guy had a TikTok account and Snapchat and Twitch or Kick or, or anything, and we just like didn't show up on us for you page, because we didn't try. Right. Because we kind of just like said, eh, what's the excuse? What are you going to say? What's your excuse? Uh, well, you know, the excuse has been we don't do that. Yeah. But it's not true anymore. Because we do. We do do it. We do it. I, I'm telling you, one of the things I enjoy the most about the podcasting is looking at all the countries and cities that you're in. Yeah. I'm like, I, like yeah. I, all this stuff is Jewish content. Like, how are they, how is it finding it into, like, the, Listen, the you never know. Are, you never know. Like, that's, like, the greatest thing. It's like, I had an episode with Yussi Landau. It has 330,000 views on, on YouTube. Really? Which is great. We're talking about, like, like I have this video on TikTok, and we get, we we garnered quite the following on TikTok because of it. It was a it was a it was a slammer from Rabbi Waller's scene. Oh my God, yes. that was an ad. Whoa, I don't know what that, that was. That was awesome. That wasn't awesome. <laughs> I, I, that is not going out. <laughs> sorry for the guy who's wearing headphones right now. That was amazing. Um, I'm not gonna be able to find it right now. But we had this video on 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 TikTok that got like five million views. It was basically Rabbi Wallerstein. And I edited this myself. It was like crazy. Like I found it, I edited it, and I post, we posted it on TikTok. And I got 5 million views. It was Rabbi Wallerstein saying, like, the greatest quote I ever heard is someone, someone said, instead of being buried, I was planted. Like you're, not, you're not being buried, you're being planted. Your, tra- your, your struggles, your troubles, those things, they are planting you. So 5 million people saw that. A rabbi saying it. Wow. I don't know. I, I my my dream also. Yeah. Super Bowl commercial. Really? Having Super Bowl commercial. Like that's my what dream. What does that mean? I don't mm-hmm. understand what that means. I, I'll explain it to you. Like a commercial about me. I, it bothers me. Like where is come on, like where are Kiev organizations? Like there are there are three hundred million people watching the Super Bowl. How many of those people are Jewish? Probably millions, right? right. That we don't know about, right? And like, can you imagine if just bear with me. You cut to a scene of of a lady just lighting Shabbos candles and going like this with like a tichel. 
she's lighting candles and a guy is saying Shema Yisrael and they're going through the olive bays and what if that brings up a memory in a, in a Jew who saw his safta, who came from Poland, do that once or twice before his family completely assimilated? Like, scan the QR code to go back to your roots. Come home. You know, like, there's this whole Christian campaign. Yeah, like, like Christians they have commercials, like, hard, he gets yeah. us, right? Like, right. The, the, the story of the Jews is that we're scattered, right? We're, like, the sand and the stars, like, we're scattered. Mm -hmm. What if our campaign is, like, come home? Scan the code to find out more about your Judaism. Wow. How many people are going to scan that code and be like, I think I'm Jewish? Well, I had on I had on Rabbi Harry. You know Rabbi Harry? Yeah, Rosenberg? Rabbi Harry was, uh, I actually did my college credits with him. Oh, right. <laughs> you did college credits. So I don't know if I actually graduated. <laughs> no, I did. I have a diploma. I, I have a diploma. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi Harry, he's yeah, awesome. He's great. But he's got a whole mission to gather like the, the 10 tribes. tribes. Yeah. He's like, but it's all being done on the internet. And it's all, and people are like reaching out like, yeah, I'm part of the Benyamin tribe. I don't know, whatever tribe they're in. So you'll donate $36 to the commercial? Thirty-six dollars, you got so it. We need like seven. So we need six million nine hundred and something. Yeah. but that's we're like, almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> like, doesn't bother you? Like, you see, like, uh, he gets us, uh, and they're talking about Yashka, and it's like, why don't we got that? I don't know. We do. I a, we do a stop anti-Semitism thing. Like, thank you, Robert Kraft. I appreciate it. Like, it's I, it's important. The blue square, but like, we as as from Jews, we need to we need to bring our people home. We need to be aggressive. We need to bring our people home. Right. You know, I saw a Gouda. They put up a billboard somewhere. I was driving. I saw it. I took a picture of it even. The the thing is noahs.org, noahs, and with a kid with a yarmulke, and they said, we're not raising our kids to hate America. Great. Love that. More of that. More of that. Right. Less hiding and more, you know. Just put it out there. I love it because I do feel like we're in the ingathering of the exiles. Like, I feel like it's happening. I mean, this war really brought out that the different, the colorfulness of the Jews. Yeah. And the different cultures. And it's like, it feels like, and everybody was like, the white imperialists or whatever, whatever they say. And you're like, what? The whole country is full of color. And yeah. like, Jews are everywhere and they need to be. Well, then I love your dream. That's, that's our new, uh, I'll, I'll like spoil it here. I shouldn't, but like, that's a new project that we're working heavily on is what we created in America. We're creating in Israel and fully Hebrew. Really? We're going to create Hebrew podcasts. We're going to create meaningful men in Hebrew, a, a daka, shel mishmot. It's going to, the, these people need to hear messages that speak to them. You know, a country that's been so divided with this haredim and there's chilonim and the in-between is so bare. We want to get in there and we want to just create messages of love and and and, um, and what the Torah is all about. It's like the Torah is a is is a loving document. It's a loving thing. And the Torah is yours. It doesn't matter if you lived your whole life so far and you rejected all of it and you rejected the, its ideals. You know, we believe Yeshua Hashem Karafai and right? Right. Salvation come in a blink of an eye. You could change. You could turn around. Wow. You do you do around. subtitles at now or no? So we we subtitle in in, in English now. Do you, could you subtitle? In Hebrew? I feel like you don't the, think I feel it like it's work. insulting. Like I feel like I, I heard that both, Israelis no? are like, don't show us English videos with Hebrew subtitles. Make us read. Come on. No, we're gonna go. We're gonna go Hebrew. We're gonna create content. No, no, you should definitely go yeah. Hebrew. I'm just curious. But it's also a different message that speaks to them than what speaks to Americans here. It's like. Like everyone needs a different path and different, different, uh, different messages. It's like, well, I would tell you something. I hope you put English subtitles on the Hebrew ones. That's the plan. That because I don't mind reading. Yeah, that's the I'm plan. I'm saying because you know the Hebrew content's gonna be fire. It's gonna be fire. And yeah. by the way, I have this thing that I only like to do podcasts in person. And there are so many people in Israel I want to talk to. There's Get on a plane. so many. Get on a plane and go. I know. I keep going on a plane and I'm forgetting to do it. You don't bring your. You need to bring Ellie with you. I That's gotta bring problem. Ellie and do Back it. Back with a suitcase. Okay, if there are major sponsors out there that want to really on. take this thing to the next level, I would love to do a trip. I haven't been tour. to Israel since 2018. Really? I was there three times. I think this I'm going year. this year, though. I think I'm going this year. You gotta go. I think I'm going this summer. How are you not going? I know it's the craziest thing. No, that's people crazy. always say this to me, dude. You you have but a like, tour I think ready I'm to go. On something with my people in Nefesh Benefesh. so I'm excited to like. Oh, uh, wow. Maybe, uh, which is cool also. Moving to Israel is pretty cool. I'm sh you're the type to make Aliyah. Yeah, I didn't. I moved to Muncie instead. Is that weird? 
I could, truth is, a rabbi of mine didn't let me go. You wanted to, though. Yeah. You did. Rabbi Herbst told me that in, until you get someone to take over what you're doing, you're not allowed to go. Wow. So that was really, like, one of the big reasons. And no one's crazy enough to take off or take over what you're doing. Yeah. We're trying. Maybe Ellie will do it. I don't yeah, know. Ellie's not wearing a tie-dye shirt yet. He's got to wear if, he, if he's willing to put the tie-dye on. <laughs> he's getting there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. At some point, I, I this last time I went, I was just, a friend of mine lives in Nehusha. Don't know what that is. Shout out Bernie, but I'm saying we were. I went to visit him, and it's just like I. I always fell in love with the land. It's just like just yeah. looking at everything. I texted you. You're like, I'm in Israel, so I'm just not going to be using my phone for the next three days. Right. Like I'm not talking yeah. to you. Sorry. It's like, I don't know. Like I. Uh, <laughs> I, I interviewed someone who lives in the old city the other day, and she's talking to me about like the David and the Chorva. I was like, the, you know, like I get, I put my foot in my mouth so often because every time I go on a podcast, I say like we belong there, and everyone's like, well, why don't you move there? Right. And I say I should, and I and I should, and I I don't know. It's hard, it's hard. I don't know why. It's difficult. It's the family, this that, kids. It's difficult. I don't know. I yeah. uh, there are reasons, but like the future of the Jewish people. Is in Israel, like Shlomo Kass or Shlomo Kass told me this, like, like literally, the future of the Jewish people is in Israel. Where Mashiach comes, based on Dush, where is it going to be? It's not going to be in Five Towns. It's not going to be in Muncie. Sorry, Baltimore. It's not going to be there either. It's going to be in Israel. So that we we know that the future of the Jewish people is there. So what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Is by the way, there's more people. There's a higher now. You can check me historically. There's a higher percentage of Jews in Israel now than there was since the first base of Dush. The second base thing is most Jews are still living in to, Babylon. How do you expect me to fact check that, Ellie? I'm like, who kidding. am I going to ask? Like, you got to like calling like the coin Guddle and say, "Dude, hey, you get real historians you the consens- on your thing." The census from like, if you get historians on your thing, you got <laughs> which I, historian is going to be able to know with the percentage of Jews by the first base of English? Easy, come on. You get uh, what's his name? Dr. Barrel Henry, Wine. You know, Doctor Henry. You may bring Josephus up. Josephus. You know, Doctor Henry Abramson. Yes. Love him. Legend. I interviewed him. Yeah? Yeah. I missed a lot of your pods. PSS now. Okay. What, he talks about the PSS now? He, he, he got a degree in, like, PSS now, like... That's his PhD? Theology or something. Really? Uh, yeah, like, literally. He wrote his thesis on that or something. I think he's from Baltimore, by the way, talking about Baltimore. Isn't he from Baltimore? I think it would have came up. <laughs> I don't know. You love Baltimore. Know. But you know what he he uh, he said, um, so the PSS another Ish Kodesh, right? Right. He, he it was alive during the war, and he and the rest of his community were killed, mm. right during the Holocaust, and he he buried and uh, someone one of us see them him buried canisters, a lot of his work, right, his writings, his teachings. How do we know his teachings? Do you ever think of how to get here? Like, and in in the nineties, someone was. Uh, Someone was, some a Polish digger was digging with an excavator. No way. And they, That's how they found they it. Hit something hard, and they, they pulled it up, and it was, it was the work from the PSS now. That's uh, that, that that that's what they published at the Ish Kodesh, and that was his teachings, and it was like writings of what was going on at that time in the in the ghetto, and his Torah, what he was saying, and like. And I remember speaking about this with Dr. Henry Avison, and my reaction to him was, what a schuss that Polish digger had to be the one to dig that up. Like, who were his grandparents? Who was that guy? Who was he? Like, seriously, like, he's going to another work of digging mud in Poland, and, uh, hey, honey, how was your day? Oh, no, just dug up some old documents, which hundreds of thousands of from Jews live by nowadays. They're like they, they, they follow the the word of the PSS now. Wow. Rabbi Moshe Weinberger is who he is because of the PSS and his teachings. If there's no Polish guy digging that up, is there Is there an H code? Is there a Moshe Weinberger? <laughs> right. Isn't that crazy? It's wild. <laughs> Trippy thought. Yeah. Crazy. Well, so we all go to Israel. Yeah. I, I would love to. That's the truth. I think I, we'll get there eventually. I'm trying to build communities. Listen, the future is there. The future is there. So, God willing, we all listen, we hear the call and we're able to listen to it. But who knows if the call is happening right now? Do we know? Um, I think the call is happening. I feel like we know by I'm, trying, I'm four getting, fifths didn't go. Maybe the internet's got a weird algorithm at me, but it's they're throwing hate my way. Oh my god! Are you waiting to hear like a chauffeur blast? Is that what's going to happen? 
I think if we get a chauffeur bus, it's too late. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right. Guys. <laughs> like, right. sorry, you missed the bus. <laughs> it's already blowing. Like, I, you ever, I wonder what's going to happen. I don't know. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. It's anyway, thank you for coming. I'm pleasure. stopping. That My was pleasure. awesome. Yeah. I'm going to take this challenge of trying to find meaningful people in regular people. Maybe that's. Okay. You'll do that. I, I don't know. You did it with me, so you, got, you accomplished that. It was really one. fun to have you on the hot seat, which is, it is, it is, I like being interviewed more also. It's just being able, it's, you could just really be authentic and reactive as opposed to being scripted and trying to like, you're working ultimately. Right. I hope I didn't make you work too hard. This one was very, very chill. The last couple felt like uh, I, w I was being careful. I felt like I w a lot of things. <laughs> I felt, I felt like you were like an oral surgeon. I was like, what? You know, drilling a root canal? Right. This felt more like a dermatologist. Like, Popping use pimples? this cream. <laughs> <laughs> dermatology. Can be Come back good. in a week. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Sorry, you're a dermatologist. You work very hard. Um, <laughs> well, I'll say, I'll get, I'll, I'll like say something in my podcast like that. I, okay, I won't get away with it. I have to be careful. Like, I'll like say something about like, T neck and I'll get killed. Oh really? Yeah. But I love T neck. You love T neck. I once said something like, "People in T neck read Mishpacha." You said that? Yeah. Is that a bad thing to say? Well, I just didn't think it was a demographic to read Mishpacha <laughs> magazine. This probably yeah, it's true. <laughs> You're saying like, well, you just said it again on a podcast. I'm not saying it. <laughs> Do people of T neck will watch my podcast? I don't know. I probably, no probably. It says T neck on the on the places. Oh, so, does it? Yeah. How many? I'm just curious if I can go eat in humble toast. Neck, I think it's like six people in T neck. Okay. No, six people. Six we can handle. It's only like seventy podcasts. It's probably three people listening. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. It's amazing. It, it is fun to find all this stuff. Um. You said your dreams. I usually ask, like, if you have, like, a rooftop to yell your message to the world. But I feel like you said your dreams, so I... Um, you know, you know, I'll yell? Like, where yeah. are you? Like, are you Jewish? Ayeka. Are you Jewish? Dude, write a freaking book called You're Jewish. You have to write it. I'm sorry. Are you Jewish? <laughs> you don't have to write it. You can just, like... Are you Jewish? You. Are you Jewish? I'm Jewish. No, no. So you tell see, me. That, that should be the message. Yeah, but, like... Dude, if you, you put out a book that says, Are you Jewish? That is going to be the most Chabad thing you ever did. Yeah, got, I think. Yeah, Ellie, you got to check out this TED Talk. Um, the most watched TED Talk ever. That's like the title of the TED That's Talk. That's the title of it. I don't even know. I don't. And I think it became the most watched TED Talk ever because that was the title of the TED Talk. Well, that's a great name. Yeah, it was. It was pretty messed up. Was it a good TED Talk? I don't know. I don't know. I clicked on it. I, don't I, don't I watched it. But there was one TED Talk where a guy was showing without saying anything how he could mess with your emotions because he was just going up. And down, and it was like oh, and I'm I'm talking about nothing. Well, you but can, now, you can and do he, that, no? yeah, probably. Therapists I don't know. Could probably do that. They probably could get it done. Probably. Then you love how therapists could just be like, I think this is like the bit about therapists where yeah. a, guy, a guy could be like, yeah, and then I just like killed my family, and like if the therapist like it hits like three forty five, they're like, all right, so we'll pick up oh. there next week. <laughs> you know, it's like the guy just. You know, like one of my best therapist movies, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a movie where all the therapists, I don't know if you know all the psychoanalysts like in Manhattan, at least I don't know what happens with Manhattan now. They all take off August. Like that's, that's August. the thing. The August, they all, the all the psychoanalysts, they go to the islands. They feel that's where they do their all self care. Right. It's an old fashioned thing. I don't know if they're still doing it, but what happened was this person is going through like, hell and having breakthroughs and the therapist's like okay well i'll see you in september yeah and she's like, like oh well what so what ends up happening is that a group of people find each other that all lost their therapist no way they're all and like, they end up <laughs> having a group and all getting better like that's they don't amazing. need the therapist that's anymore. the power of community that's what i'm trying to say i gotta community. find this movie but it was that's amazing and they all like fall apart together because they don't the know what they're doing right? the challenge for everyone watching if you go to therapy when you see, look at your watch, if there's two minutes left in, the, in in your therapy session, bring up something crazy. By the way, there's a name for it. You know there's a name for that? No. It's called a doorknob. What? Actually, it's a thing that clients will do. They'll hold off till the end of the session. They don't wow, want to see their... therapists have like a thing. They have a name. Oh so what, they, what they'll do is, like, as you're leaving the door, literally, they'll be like, <laughs> by the way, uh, my mother died. And they'll just walk out the door. And you're like... What? Okay, that'll what? be two fifty. <laughs> be like, that's a good breakthrough. We'll see you next week. You know, <laughs> it's like that's important. That's good. Yeah. Oh man. Well, we call it a doorknob, and that's. You guys have like it. a group chat where you make up names for people. We make up names. It's just, just tons of names. All right. No, it's good to know. It's good to know.
Okay, bye. Pleasure being here. <laughs> See you. It was awesome. Thank you for this day that I've been given. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this chance. Thank you for this chance to live anew.